Rob here from Unimedia and in this video we are going to be talking about the text editor in Elementor, so stay tuned. At Unimedia we help companies to grow and thrive using the latest tools, tricks and marketing techniques. From websites to online marketing, automated sales funnels, social media and much more. We're always releasing new content on our YouTube channel, so make sure you click the like, subscribe and notification button to make sure that you don't miss out. Just before we get going, I want to tell you about an exclusive offer we have on at the moment. We're giving away free access to our paid Hub Uno platform to the first 50 people that click the link in the description. We're going to be putting this link in the description of all of our videos, so make sure that you get in there as quick as you can. Within Hub Uno, we have created over 100 training videos in 13 courses, including a course on how to build a website using Elementor. You'll also find recorded webinars and a host of other free content, so remember to click the link in the description. Let's get on with the video. Hello, welcome to this video. We are going to be talking about the text editor element of Elementor. Before we begin then, I've got a page layout of Elementor full width. I've got one section here with one column in, and I've changed the background color of the section to blue. To get back to our elements then, we just need to click the grid here. So the first thing we want to do is we want to drag our text editor tile into our column. In this video, we are gonna go over content and style. A lot of the advanced options here, we have separate videos for, uh, but of course, if you want to use margin and padding options, you can do that and you will find them in advanced. So let's go back over to content. At the moment, we've got a default paragraph of Lorem Ipsum in there. I have actually copied some more Lorem Ipsum over uh, to give us a little bit more text to work with. Now, it's best to edit all your text in here as opposed to live edit in um, your paragraph over here, purely because if I show you, um, it messes with the formatting a bit. So um, if I make a space in here and then click in this box, eh, the space disappears. Um, so let's just keep it uh, all the editing to this box here. So you might recognize uh, a few of these settings. They're very similar to your word processing software that you might be used to. We're going to go through each option here um, show you what they do, some you'll be familiar with, but some are new because we are doing this for web as opposed to word processing for print. So the first thing we're going to do is make this sentence here a heading. Now, normally we would use the heading tile, but I'm just going to show you that we can do, um, do headings within text. This would end up being the same font family though as your paragraph, so if you are wanting a heading uh, that is a different font family, it's best to use the separate heading element. But let's just click onto our sentence here and we can use this drop down to select our heading. I'm just going to go with H3 for now. Let's go through a couple of these options you might be familiar with. If I just highlight my sentence here, we've got bold, italic and underline. We've got bullet points, numbering, this option here will add a link. So if you click on it, you put in your link here um, and you'd click apply. I'm going to do some advanced settings to show you what we can do. Um, so I'm going to put my link in here, unimedia.com, and I'm going to make sure that this is ticked open link in a new tab. This means that if you are sending your visitors away to another website, uh, if they close that website down, they will be back on your website and therefore you haven't lost their interest or they are going to be back to uh, look at your services. Let's just add the link then. And as you can see, we can tell it's a link now because the color's changed. Next, we can make this word editor here um, full screen and we can close it back down by clicking the same button again. This toggles the toolbar, so it gives you more options or closes those off. We've also got strike through, so it puts a line through the words. We've got a horizontal line, which puts our horizontal line above. We've also got text color. So this is best to be used uh, when you're trying to change the color of a single word or maybe a sentence, um, just because we can change the entire paragraph or the entire element style, uh, color in style. We've also, we can paste as text. We've also got clear formatting. So when you're copying text over from a Word document or a PDF, it might keep some of the formatting. Um, if you highlight 
your words or your paragraph you can clear the formatting and that will then restore the paragraph to the website's defaults and then you can sort of style from there you've also got block quotes and we've got alignment left center and right again a bit like the coloring it's best to use the alignment in the style option because that will apply to the entire paragraph um, whereas this option will just apply it to the single paragraph you have selected we also have special characters so accents and symbols that we can put in and we've got increase indent and decrease indent as well as our undo and redo buttons if we want to, we can also add an image into our paragraphs. Now, normally I would use the image element in Elementor, but I'm just going to show you how this works. Um, I'm just going to create a space underneath our heading. Uh, I'm going to click Add Media, and I'm going to select this image of Dan and I in front of our first office. There we go. So we've got our alignment here that we can fill around with. Uh, we can change a couple of settings here, size, left, right alignment and things, add a caption click update lastly then there is a little tab here which says text if you click that this shows you all the text including the image uh, in HTML format if you're not familiar with the code it's best to stay away just stick with visual lastly then I'm just going to show you this drop cap here it probably won't work on our current text because we've formatted it quite heavily I'm just going to put our paragraphs back in and if I click the drop cap it just adds a larger letter on the first um, letter of the text. Um, you probably won't use this very often, but the option's there if you want it. So let's just turn that off. In fact, I'm going to delete, right click and delete that text there. And if we want to go back into our options, we want to click edit text editor. There we go. So I'm going to stop there for a moment uh, to allow you to pause the video and add your own text and play around with the formatting. Okay, let's now look at the style of our text editor element. So let's go up to style in the top. And as I mentioned, we've got left line, center and right and justified. And you can see that this actually applies to all the, the text as opposed to the single paragraph you've got. I'm going to go with justified. We've got our text color picker here. We've got the spectrum we can play around with, find the color we want. We've also got transparency. I'm going to stick with white. There is a video on how to use this color picker tool. If you haven't seen it, I recommend you go check it out because it's a tool you'll use quite often. I'm going to select white for now. Now we want typography. Again, there is a video separate that goes into more detail for using this tool. Um, so let's just skip through this. I know that our font is Josephine Sands. So I'm going to select that. I'm going to put 1.2 rem, weight 300, uh, I don't want to do any decoration or transformations, line height, you can see it's the spacing between each line of text, and letter spacing is the spacing between the letters or characters. So I'm going to close that window. We can also uh, put our text into columns, so you could create a section with two columns put text in uh, one column and another text editing block in another this is a kind of a tidy way of um, splitting your text into two columns so let's go to the drop down uh, we can have up to 10 columns but I'm just gonna go with two I think 10 will probably be a bit too much as you can see so yeah let's go with two and we can also change the gap between our columns there. Don't forget in the advanced options we do have our padding and our margins. There you go, that'll do. 50px. That's it for this video then. We'll see you in the next one. Of course, don't forget to click the green update button at the bottom when you are done.